Our top story today. Victims of the post office horizon scandal have been told they can be swiftly exonerated and compensated under a new law that's going to be introduced by the government. Rishi Sunak described the scandal as one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in our nation's history. And the PM also announced an upfront payment of 75 grand to many of those who have been affected. To talk us through the new legislation, Peter Carwell, Talk TV's chief political commentator, is here, as is the legal commentator, Joshua Rosenberg. Thank you both so much. Joshua, I'd love to start with you. This is really an extraordinary piece of uh, legislation because effectively it's given the government the power that we would normally say judges have. Can mm. you talk us through kind of how unprecedented this is and what it means? Yes, we've not seen anything quite like this before. I don't think the judges are so worried about it because if this uh, proposal goes through Parliament and becomes law, well, the judges are there to uh, give effect to laws passed by Parliament. But I think some lawyers are concerned about it because it's not just the innocent uh, postmasters uh, and uh, other post office branch managers who are going to be compensated. Kevin Hollenrake, the post office minister, admitted that the government was facing a dilemma. They either accept the present problem of many people carrying the unjustified slur of conviction, or they have to do what they're doing at the moment, which is going to mean that an unknown people who've genuinely stolen from their post office will be exonerated and perhaps even compensated. Mm. And, and Joshua, that's the problem, isn't it? Because 24 years on, <clears throat> this has just gripped the entire nation, quite rightly, on the back of a, a TV drama. And yesterday, <clears throat> you know, I was very forceful in saying, these poor people, we can talk about money, Joshua, but actually I'm talking about the people who went to their graves <clears throat> unable to prove that they were innocent, people who tried to take their lives, and the stigma and the humiliation in their own environments. And I said yesterday, look, they should be exonerated and cleared. Many, though, I mean, you point to some could be guilty, I don't know about that, but many want their day in, in court, their day in the sun. They want it known that they are innocent. And, and, and thus, it's a, it's a mess. But one thing, I guess, the legal profession, I'd love your opinion on this, need to, to do, along with the government, is sort this damn mess out, because it is an absolute disgrace, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, there is a public inquiry which is methodically going through the evidence, interviewing the key witnesses. As you've reported, it resumes its hearings today. It'll carry on for the rest of this year. And of course, uh, a number of people, 95, have already been exonerated, but there are many more. Why haven't they come forward? Some of them just want nothing more to do with the legal system. Uh, some of them perhaps feel uncomfortable about the whole thing. It's even possible that among uh, that those, those large numbers, there are a few who were genuinely guilty and don't want their cases referred to the court. Some tried. About a third of the cases that were referred to the Criminal Cases Review Commission before uh, last September were rejected by this public body, which uh, uh, looks into suspected miscarriages of justice, uh, it decided not to refer them to the Court of Appeal because there was other evidence, quite apart from the Horizon computer system, uh, which seemed to suggest they were guilty. So it is a difficult situation. But yes, it's taken far, far too long. And as you say, for some, it's sadly too late. And what's really interesting, Joshua, is trying to define what justice actually is. Because mm. for some of those postmasters, it is going to be a huge relief. They can sign a piece of paper that said, I did not do this, they get the compensation. For others, they're saying, I don't actually want there to be any hint of my guilt. And I don't want to be part of this big group of 700 people where, as we've already discussed, there is an acknowledgement that there may be some who did commit crimes. And they say, no, I really, really want my name to be cleared, not just to sign a piece of paper to say I, I didn't do something. Is this about, do you think, legally, the best kind of compromise we can come to, that the majority of people get the best outcome? It's certainly a way of speeding things up. I, I don't know how many people are waiting for their cases to come before the courts. Uh, you would have thought that most of them, uh, the, most of the people who wanted to be exonerated by the Court of Appeal have already tried going mm. through that process. But you're absolutely right. Um, uh, everybody's going to be grouped together and listed and everybody's going to be cleared and everybody's going to be compensated. But there are certainly people, and I've spoken to one or two, who do want to hear a judge say, yeah. this evidence simply doesn't stand up uh, and, and uh, you know that has been the position up to now uh, with the nearly 100 people who've gone through the courts and in future presumably that will stop because the only way of getting cleared I suppose will be to accept uh, this new blanket system. I think you're right and I think there will be many who do not have the stomach for the fight 
I think there are many who will want that fight. There might be a few, we don't know, that are guilty. Um, from a legal point of view, though, Josh, you could have you on. Can I just ask about further ramifications? What I love about the British media, they're going to hound all the people, quite rightly, who are behind this. And, and there are many mired in this, from Sir Ed Davey, who was the post office minister. We've heard absolutely nothing. Paula Vanells gave back a CB and is about to be uh, pursued by the press, quite rightly, to maybe hand back a bonus while these people were suffering. Can you see, from a legal perspective, further down the line, criminal proceedings against people behind this catastrophe, Joshua? Yes, I can. And the Crown Prosecution Service has apparently got a senior lawyer standing by who's keeping an eye on the situation. But I think everybody, uh, and that's not just the prosecution service, but also the disciplinary bodies that deal with lawyers, is going to wait for the result of the public inquiry, chaired by the retired judge, Sir Wynne Williams. It will finish taking evidence this year. It's been delayed, partly because of the post office not disclosing documents on time. It wow. probably won't report till next year. Mm. Really interesting. Thank you, Joshua, for now. Thank you very much indeed.